Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be looking at some more advanced selectors in CSS. In previous videos, we've looked at the three most commonly used selectors, namely the element or type selector, the ID selector, and the class selector. And we also looked at our first combinator selectors with the child and descendant selectors, which allow us to target elements based on child, parent, or ancestor descendant relationships. So in this video, we're going to carry on looking at combinators and we'll look at those concerned with sibling selectors. So we're going to look at the adjacent sibling selector, which selects a given element only if it immediately follows the first named element, and both the children are of the same parent. We'll also learn about general sibling selectors, which enable us to select a given element only if it follows the first named element, though not necessarily immediately, and both are children of the same parent. So I have a simple project open here in VS Code, and as always, you can find the links to the starting and ending code in the description below. All I've got here is a simple HTML file that has a couple of linked style sheets. Style.css contains the general styles for the page, and you don't need to touch this unless you want to jazz up or play around uh, with this simple general styling for this sandbox page. We also have a second file, which we'll be working in, and this is called selectors.css. CSS and it's currently totally blank. To get the code, you can go about it in a couple of different ways. You can either download it from this GitHub repo using this green download button, and then once you have it, you can open it in the text editor of your choice. This is VS Code in my case. It contains both the starting files where I'll begin from in this video and the files in the state that they are going to be in at the video's conclusion. Alternatively, you might not be able to download the project where you are, so you could be working on a public computer in a library or at school for example so you can find the same starting and ending files on CodePen. The only difference between the GitHub files and the project on CodePen is that the CodePen project only gives us one CSS panel to work in so any sibling selectors that you create in this video will just go at the bottom underneath the general styles and I've added comments to indicate where to write each selector. You don't need to create a CodePen account to work with these projects you can start coding as soon as you open the link but it does help if you do have an account and I would recommend it as CodePen is a really good resource. It's free and you can save any pens that you work in uh, to your own profile and then come back later on if you do have an account. At the top of this page, I have some links to MDN resources on which selectors we have covered in previous videos. I'm not going to be explaining these in this video, so if you do need a refresher on those selectors, have a read of these MDN pages or go back and watch the previous videos which cover those selectors in detail. The link to those videos covering common selectors like element class and ID selectors and then the child and descendant selectors are below in the description. If you saw the last video, we explored child, parent, and ancestor descendant element relationships and how we can burrow down into our documents and target elements really accurately based on those relationships. Now, we're going to do the same thing with regard to making selections based upon the relationships of sibling elements. And sibling elements are simply those that share a common parent element and sit on the same level in the document structure. So looking at this tree structure representation of an HTML document, we would say that these three LI elements are siblings. They all share a common parent element, which is the OL element in this case. Similarly, the OL, the P, and the H1 are also siblings and are children of a common parent element, which is the body element. In turn, the body element is a sibling of the head element as they are on the same level and share a common parent element, which is the HTML element. To make selections based on sibling relationships, we can use a couple of combinator selectors, the adjacent sibling combinator and the general sibling combinator. These are called combinators as they combine one or more of the basic selector types that we already know well, elements, classes, and IDs, listed from the top down and separated by a space and or other special character. When we select in direct children of an element, like we did in the last video, using the child combinator selector, we would say something like div angled bracket p. And when trying to figure out what a selector is doing, it actually makes sense to read combinators from right to left. So here we would be saying select p or paragraph elements that are the direct children of div elements. So the angled bracket here is the combinator we would use to select direct children of a named parent element. So this combinator explores it's a parent-child relationship, and in this video, we're going to exploit sibling relationships. 
So we'll start with the adjacent sibling selector, which allows us to apply styles to a given element based on the sibling element, which immediately precedes it. So the adjacent sibling combinator selector matches an element, say a paragraph element, only if it meets the condition of immediately following the first element that we name. So looking at our HTML file, we'll explore this using this section that has the class of adjacent Dash sibling. We have a couple of paragraph elements within this section, but one here that immediately follows this H2 element that is the heading for this section, which in the browser is this one here. If you saw the last video, we know how to select this H2 element based upon parent-child relationships. We could use either the child or descendant combinator. If we select the adjacent sibling class and give it the color of magenta, that makes the whole section, including the children and descendants, have magenta text applied because of a concept called inheritance, which we're going to talk about in detail later on in another video. We can then use either the child combinator selector or the descendant combinator selector to select the H2. Either is fine, as this H2 is both a direct child and an ancestor of this particular class in this case, much in the same way as you're a child and a descendant of your own parents. So I'll go with the descendant selector method and save, and reading right to left, we're selecting all H2s that are descendants of the element with the adjacent sibling class. There's just one, of course, but we could have as many H2s as we like, and if we had loads of these, they'd all be targeted and styled. So we'll save, and we see the styles applied. So, now that we've happily targeted the H2, we can now select elements that are siblings of the H2. We actually have two sibling paragraphs within this section, but it is only one that is directly adjacent or next to the H2, and we can target that with the adjacent sibling combinator. The syntax would be to have the actual element that we're targeting, this paragraph in our case, preceded by the element that is the adjacent sibling. These are then separated by a plus or addition symbol. So reading this from uh, right to left now before we save, we're selecting the P element that is the adjacent sibling. That's what this combinator is saying. So the paragraph that is an adjacent sibling of an H2 within this section. So if we save now, we see that that's one paragraph element that is the adjacent sibling of an H2 within the adjacent sibling section is now magenta. How about if we wanted to select the second paragraph instead? Well, we could say that we wanted an adjacent sibling of what we have currently selected. So we would do this. Or we could shorten this to this, which is much simpler. We're now selecting a paragraph, which is the adjacent sibling of a paragraph that is the descendant of an element with the adjacent sibling class applied to it. That means if we now add a couple more paragraphs on the end, it will select these as these meet the criteria of being paragraphs that are adjacent siblings of paragraphs in this section. The first paragraph is not selected, of course, as it is adjacent to an H2. I can demonstrate this better if I drop another element in between these four paragraphs. So let's add, say, a div in the middle with the text of hello, I am a div element. And if I now save, this third paragraph isn't selected as it's no longer adjacent to a paragraph, it's adjacent to a div element. The only elements we have now that meet the criteria are the second paragraph, which is adjacent to the first paragraph, and the fourth paragraph, which is adjacent to the third paragraph. If I change this to div, what do we think might happen now? What would we actually be selecting? Have a think for a second, and let's read it backwards. We're selecting a paragraph, and the plus symbol means that the paragraph is an adjacent sibling of something. But what exactly? Well, it's going to be the adjacent sibling of a div element that is the descendant of an element with this class. Well, there's our class, and there's the div, which is its descendant. And the P, that is the adjacent sibling to this div, is this one here. So when I save, we would expect only this third paragraph now to be magenta in color. So let's try that, and there we go. Already, we're seeing how specific we can be when targeting elements by exploiting parent-child or ancestor-descendant and adjacent sibling relationships.
Okay, so let's turn our attention to general siblings now, but before we start, how do we select this whole section and apply a given set of styles to everything in here? Well, we know several ways now, and we can take advantage of parent-child, ancestor-descendant, and adjacent sibling relationships. Well, we could target an adjacent sibling of this first section, so I'll copy the class name and use the adjacent sibling combinator, and then we'll add the class name of the second section. We'll give it the color of magenta again, and there we go. We're selecting this section based on the fact that it is an adjacent sibling of this section, and we could also use a descendant combinator and do something like this. So we're looking for an element with this class that is a descendant of the body element. We save and the styles are intact. We could even target this section as a direct child of this container div here. So we could say something like this. And we're targeting this section based upon a parent-child relationship. We can continue down from here. Say we want the H2, then we could just do this. We could say container, angled bracket, general sibling, angled bracket, h2. This might now be overly verbose, and we can lose the container class and the child combinator at the start, and we're still targeting that h2. And we could go on. I'm just showing you that there are many ways to skin a cat, and when you want to target elements, you can employ many methods. You've got loads of tools at your disposal. So the next one we'll look at, as I say, is the general sibling combinator, which works almost exactly as we have seen with the adjacent sibling. The difference is that you can target all P elements that are the siblings of the H2, rather than just the one which immediately follows it. So if what we're after now is these two paragraphs that are siblings of an H2, we know that if we say this and then add a plus sign and a paragraph, we would only select the first paragraph that is the adjacent sibling to the H2. So instead, we could use a tilde symbol and select general siblings. For me, on a Mac, the tilde is found on the left-hand side of the keyboard between the shift key and the letter Z. But you might find it on the top left under the escape key if you're on a Windows keyboard. So if we save, we see that we now have those paragraphs selected on the condition that they are siblings of an H2. It would continue to work even if there are intervening elements. So I'll copy the div and the two paragraphs from the adjacent sibling section and paste them in and save. And we see that despite there being an intervening div element, it still selects the last two paragraphs. If we change that to general siblings of a P element, that is a descendant of this class, the position of the div makes no difference as the last two paragraphs are are still general siblings of the paragraphs that come before. If we use the combinator to select an adjacent sibling, then we know only the second and fourth paragraphs are now adjacent siblings of P elements, but let's change that back. What we'll do next is select all of these three gray boxes that we have on the page and put borders around them. I'll use the general sibling selector and target them based off of their sibling relationship with this H1 element. The H1 and the sections all have this container div as a common parent. So let's select our container element and in our declaration block we'll give it a border of one pixel solid and this dark gray color of hash 333. We save and we see that the border is now in place. Now this container, as we said, has child elements, which are the H1 and all of our sections. So I want to target the sections, which are general siblings of the H1. I'll select the H1, this time using a child selector. And when we save, we see our border in effect is beginning to move down the document structure to the H1 now. This first section element here at the top is the sibling which is adjacent to the H1. So to select that, we would draw on the sibling relationship with the H1 we have selected currently and use the plus or addition symbol and say section. 
and our border moves to the very first section element that is immediately adjacent to our H1. But we don't want only the immediately adjacent sibling, we want all of the general siblings of the H1 and this means a tiny syntactical change to alter what we're already selecting. Simply, we replace our addition symbol with a tilde symbol. So reading this right to left now, let's get into the habit of doing that. We're selecting section elements which are siblings of any H1 that is the child of an element with this container class. When we save, we have indeed selected and styled all of our section elements as expected. Okay, so I think that pretty much covers the general sibling selector and sibling combinators as a whole. We're really beginning to be able to burrow down deeply into our HTML documents and select any element we want. We can make good use of selectors in many ways to accurately target exactly the elements that we want. We can use basic selectors to target any elements with matching element names, classes, and IDs. We can exploit parent-child relationships between elements and ancestor-descendant relationships for elements that are further Apart. And now in this video, we've learned how to target an element or elements based on a relationship with a sibling element. We can target an adjacent element, so a matching element which is directly next to a named element on the same level in the document structure, or we can be more general and select all matching sibling elements whether they are next to a named element or not. Okay, so we'll stop here, and if you found this video useful, then please do remember to like, subscribe, share, and all of that good stuff, as it really helps us out with YouTube's algorithm and makes the channel much more discoverable for people that could benefit from the content. Also, do reach out to us on social media or in the comments below if you've got any questions or feedback, or even if you just wanna say hi. Links to all of the resources that I've used in the video are in the description below, as always, and if there's any other useful resources that you know of, please add them in the comment section, and I can always put them in the description if they're relevant to the video. So thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate your time. Join me in the very next video, which will be our final video on advanced selectors and will cover attribute selectors, which allow us to target elements based on attributes and values that they possess. And we'll also look at universal selectors, which select all matching elements, regardless of type, class, or ID. So thank you once again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.